Hello everyone, welcome back. It's Space Engineers plus me, episode 26. I'm Enigmius and today, as promised, it's blueprint day. We've got two blueprints for you. And we're going to, uh, as clearly and as quickly as possible, explain to you how to get the most out of these blueprints. We're going to show you how to set them up, what to add on to them, because we learned that pistons and blueprints don't get along. We're going to talk about how to configure the ship and the drill head. This is a, a mobile mining ship. For those of you who haven't been following the series, it's the Mantis mobile mining ship with a bi-axis uh, advanced drill head that allows us to dig down and also dig horizontally into uh, ore seams so that we can target the ore specifically with the least amount of crap that we don't want to be carrying around. So we're going to talk about how to get all that set up and working and then we're going to make sure you've got plenty of information in the information box below the video uh, in further support of that. Not just the links to the blueprints but also some information on a couple of blocks and their configuration just to make it as easy as possible for you. So the first thing we're going to look at uh, is actually the blueprints because you can't do much with these guys until they're built. Uh, and I'm going to warn you, the frame rate is very, very poor, and that's because there's a lot going on here. And I think most of it has to do with the collectors that we have on the drill head, but I haven't really gotten a, a chance to go around and start grinding things off and finding what fixes it. So just, I understand it's going to be kind of like that a lot of the time, but we're going to limit the movement so that you don't have to deal with that any more than you absolutely have to. So what we've got here, first of all, is the blueprint for the Mantis itself and we've got it set up on our little our little blueprint station with a nuclear reactor for power uh very very simple straightforward if you're familiar with how to use the blueprints you're familiar with how to set this up and how to start welding everything if you're not familiar with blueprints and how to set things up and how to start welding uh, i wish i could explain it to you in this video but it's kind of beyond the scope of what we're doing here there's lots of resources uh online that you can take a look at just basically how to set up a projector uh with a blueprint and then start welding and doing all these other things the main thing to keep in mind with this uh blueprint here is again the pistons you see up there there's a piston there's actually a part of a piston it's the piston body but not the piston head and the same thing here and over here it's the piston body that's actually extended uh but not the piston head so once you get all of this welded up these pistons the three pistons the one on either side and the one up top you can grind those off you can replace them with proper pistons <laughs> And then on these ones here, these are the ones that we have for the spotlights so that once you start drilling, if it's dark or if it's just not as bright as you would like it to see what's going on down the hole, you can extend some spotlights out over the drill head and see what's going on. And then when you want to pull the drill head out, you can retract your spotlights on the pistons, get it out of the way so that the, the drill head doesn't take them out. And Bob's your uncle, really straightforward. So if you like that idea, if you want to put a couple of spotlights on pistons, you can do that. I have it set up with two. You could probably get away with three. Uh, as long as you're a little bit careful how far you extend them, three would probably contact the pistons in the middle uh, that are attached to the drill head. But three would also allow you to get better light over the hole. So it's up to you, two, three, or none at all. It's, it's all entirely up to you. As far as the pistons that we're going to use to connect to the drill head, if you're using the drill head that I'm providing by a blueprint, you can fit 17 pistons uh, before you run into issues with things colliding with the ground when you start um, welding up the blueprint for the drill head. 17 pistons, and at the end of those 17 pistons, you put an advanced rotor. And I need to stress that you put the advanced rotor as many times as possible because without the rotor, the drill head can't spin. And if the drill head can't spin, it's no good. It's not going to do anything that it's supposed to do. It's just going to be kind of this thing with drills that you lower until it hits the ground. And then that'll be as far as it goes. So 17 pistons and the advanced rotor on the end. And then this ship will be done. It'll be all set up and everything on it will be uh, good to go. Everything that we talked about in the last episode for this ship is in place. Um, we've got waste management. We've got storage. We've got two large cargo containers. We've got the large reactor. We've got thrusters uh, in all the key directions to help it move around. Uh, it's it's a, basically a very simple um, but feature-rich ship that will allow you to move around ice lakes like this and reposition do whatever you need and just gather a lot of minerals so that you can build really big ships with really cool stuff and not have to worry too much about materials that's what it's for 
so now we can come over here and we can take a look at uh, the second phase of the build. After you've built the Mantis itself and after you've added the pistons and the advanced rotor on the end, now it comes time to add the drill head itself. Now this is another one of those things you can only build it so far and then you got to deal with pistons because it doesn't want to add all of the pistons after the stuff. But first, we're going to show you how to set this up so that it's a little bit easier for you to align everything and then we're going to give you all the exact details that you need to align it properly. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to actually turn this off for a second and we're going to take a look at what we built so that you can pretend for just a second that this is the last piston out of that chain of 17 pistons. Imagine there's 16 more pistons all the way up in the air. This is the 17th piston. This is the advanced rotor. And then on the end of the advanced rotor, you put a conveyor block. And then beside the conveyor block, you put another conveyor block. And then you put your projector on top. Now, the reason why we do this is this makes it very, very easy to align the drill head with what we've already built because we're basically attaching a blueprint to a ship that we made with a blueprint uh, with pistons. <laughs> so the easier we can make it to align everything uh, and have it work together, the better off we are. Having done that, we can turn this guy back on. Now there's some settings here. This is one of the things that's going to be in the information box uh, under the video make it easy for you guys the horizontal offset set to one vertical offset is left alone at zero forward offset minus five pitch left alone yaw and roll at 90 degrees that's going to align the blueprint of the drill head did we i bet we did didn't we oh no we turned it on good this is going to align the drill head with those blocks that we uh, put in place to help align it so that now you just have to start welding. Very, very simple, very, very straightforward. You don't have to worry about any kind of guesswork. Um, it was designed this way. I wanted to make sure that it was as easy as possible for you guys to set up. You'll find, in fact, that actually the blueprint uh, itself, if you didn't have a, a projector here, would tell you to put a projector there. If it didn't have a couple of conveyors here, it would tell you to put conveyors there. The one thing that, that I want to point out is that these um, frames and light armor blocks that are attached to the drill head, you can grind these off or you can just not weld them, it's up to you. These were necessary for me to uh, set up the drill head and build it, because I actually built it on the ground, um, placed horizontally, because it was easier for me to do it that way. So that's why we have a few extra instructions to align it and why we have these extra blocks that you can just grind off uh, or not weld in the first place. So once you get this blueprint welded, you're about 90% done, but we still need to get the horizontal drill heads. And the reason why they aren't a part of the blueprint is because they're on pistons. That's right. We're, uh, we're starting to get the pattern down pat. So what you're going to find, and we're going to go look at this on the actual drill head so that you can see what it looks like when it's built, is that extending off the conveyors on the end is uh, three uh, bent conveyor tubes. And the same thing on the other side down at the other end and then the incomplete piston here there's a piston body but no head so if you accidentally weld this go ahead and grind it off replace it with a proper brand new piston with the head and everything and then we're going to come over here and we're going to take a look at the actual assembly once it's done and in service so you can see these are the three bent conveyor tubes there's a piston and then you add two more pistons and then onto those pistons, you'll add a conveyor block. The uh, junction of choice. Let's see if I, yes, I can land on it. And then I can just stand here and look at things. So we've got a conveyor block on the end of the pistons and then we've got three drills, one underneath. And they're all basically pointing to the side because they're the side lateral pistons or drills, and we've got a drill here on the end, and then we've got a drill on the top. And that's the, the core of the horizontal mining uh, module. But then we can go look at the other side and some of the things that we included as utility to make things a little bit better, a little bit more useful. So we'll come over here. Down at the bottom, extending off the port on the drill there, is another 90 degree conveyor tube with a collector on the end. Now this is so that as it's chewing up stuff and rocks are bouncing around, you might be able to grab uh, a little bit more 
you won't miss out on as many materials that just kind of bounce into a hole and despawn. Not absolutely critical. I think that the collectors are a big problem, a uh, big part of the lag issue that we're having. So just keep that in mind. If you're having troubles with the performance and it's getting you down, uh, consider welding or sorry, grinding off the collectors. See if that helps. So then above that, uh, attached to the conveyor, we have this sloped armor block. And then we have a camera on the face of the sloped armor block facing the wall, basically. Uh, and it's a very, very useful camera as long as you have a spotlight providing an obscene amount of light so that you can actually see what's going on from the camera view. Otherwise, it's a little bit too dark. So attach onto the top drill a spotlight facing the wall above the camera on the sloped armor block, which is above the collector on the bent tube. That's the utility side for the drill head and basically do the same thing on the other side. So three pistons, conveyor, three drill heads, and then the utility bits. We're gonna go up top here. We're gonna take a look at some configurations. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is we'll actually take a look at the camera view so that you can see sort of why we go to all that trouble to add them on, uh, even if you're not modding it for a better view. So we're gonna go to the third hotbar here We've got the view for both cameras. We're going to select the first one. Now maybe it kind of becomes a little bit more clear why we have that view. So as you're lowering the drill head and you get deeper and deeper, the whole idea of going down after the drill and scoping things out manually becomes less and less appealing. So you have the camera basically aligned with the horizontal drill head so that you can see if the, the drill heads are lined up properly with the seam of ore make the adjustments you need, and then start extending the horizontal drill heads to drill out the seam, and then use the camera to check and see uh, how things are going. If it's stuck on something, what's it stuck on? Uh, is Are the drill heads too far away from the wall? Do you need to extend them some more? All the different things that so you might want to go down the hole and check yourself, you can check from the camera. So that's really the reason why we have that. And now, we're going to take a look uh, very briefly at the configuration for the things that you might want. One of the things that I, I don't think I mentioned is when you're welding all this stuff up and you're welding pistons, do them in groups. So if you're doing the pistons that are on the arms that are holding the spotlights, do all those. And then before you build or weld any other pistons, the vertical ones or the ones on the horizontal uh, drill head, go into your control seat, set up the group for the pistons with the spotlights, then do your vertical pistons. Before you do the horizontal pistons, go to the control seat, set up the group for all of your vertical pistons so that it's easy to get everything set up. If you weld all of your pistons all at once and then try and divide them up into groups so that you can control them properly, you're going to go insane. And it's not going to be my fault because I already warned you. So the first uh, hotbar that I have is for basically, it's all about controlling the Mantis. It's not about worrying about the Mantis as a drilling rig. It's just worrying about it as a ship. So we have the controls for the pistons holding the spotlights to extend and retract. The way I, do, I work the pistons is I have them all set to a speed of 0.1. And then if I want them to move, I turn them on. And if I don't want to move, I turn them off. If I want to change the direction, I have the button for reverse. So that's as simple as it gets, is you're, you're moving them one way or the other, and if you want to move them the other way, then you hit reverse, and if you want to stop them from moving, you turn them off. And it's the same for all of the pistons in the whole setup. I've also got uh, the buttons to turn on or off, the conveyor sorters and the uh, connectors that are handling the waste removal. So if I want to, for example, stockpile a little bit of stone to refine into gravel to make some reactor components, I can do that with just a couple of button presses. I don't have to go into the config in the control panel. I can just do it right from here. And of course, turn the thrusters on and off, turn the batteries on and off, or in this case, turn the batteries to recharge or not recharge. That's how I set it up so that if I want to be able to move around and draw power from the batteries, uh, I can. I can set them to not recharge. And then when I'm stationary like this, I can set them to recharge. And then I don't have to worry about drawing power from batteries to power things that the reactor should be powering, even though the game supposedly will take care of that for me. We don't, we don't trust everything. Second hot bar is all about controlling the drill setup. So actually we'll uh, go in here so that you can see it on the action bar itself. The drill head for the vertical piston, same as the first one. It's, we've got one button to turn them on or off, they're moving or they're not. And then the toggle button to reverse whatever direction they're going in. 
Same thing for the horizontal pistons. They're moving or they're not, and a button for reverse. We've got a button to turn the gyros on or off because the gyros are controlling the speed of the drill head, the rotation of the drill head, not the advanced rotor. So we have that set uh, to turn the gyros on or off and also a button to increase or decrease the yaw override on the gyros so that we can adjust the speed again without going into the control panel and lastly a button to turn all of the drill heads on or off so we've got uh, six lots of drill heads I just did the math in my head and it came out to lots something like 17 drill heads uh, we can turn them all on or off uh, as a group here save a little power if you're retracting the drills or doing something you don't need the, the drills running if you wanted to divide them up into different groups so you have one for the punch on the bottom uh, then one for the vertical clearing heads and then another one for the horizontal heads you can do that but I found usually by the time you get uh, the whole drill head submerged under the surface you're running all the drill heads anyway so there's there wasn't really much point in going to the trouble of keeping them uh, detached and distinct from one another I don't think I looked at the gyros in the control panel, so we're going to look at that very, very quickly. Uh, and if I'm repeating myself, I apologize, but if I'm not repeating myself, you'll be glad that I realized that I forgot to mention these things. <laughs> just, just a couple things that we want to look at. First of all, the advanced rotor. Uh, the setting for this is when you want the thing to move, you have it set to on with torque of zero. And that basically allows it to spin freely and then the gyros control the speed. I get better control out of the gyros than I did trying to manage the torque on this thing with uh, RPM setting and all that other stuff. You want to set the braking torque to uh, whatever you like. You can mess around with it. I've got it set to three. It seems to do a decent job of uh, slowing things down without bringing it to a jarring halt. And the way this works is when you turn off the advanced rotor, the uh, braking uh, torque will apply itself and slow things down rather than just letting it spin freely without any any um, spinning applied. <laughs> the technical term. You get the idea. If you want to stop it, set it to off, and the braking torque will kick in and slow it down as long as you've also turned the gyros off. Speaking of the gyros on the drill head, to set these up, make sure override controls is checked. Set yaw override to about minus one RPM. That'll set it not only going at an appropriate speed to get started, but also in the appropriate direction for the way the drill heads work. And then ignore the pitch and the roll override. So really, really simple and straightforward for that as well. So that's the setup. So in the information box below the video will be the two blueprints, one for the ship, one for the drill head. I've shown you what you need to add in by way of pistons and where, giving you an idea to how to set up the controls. And now it's up to you to uh, download the blueprints and go ham and do whatever you can. By all means, feel free to adjust, modify, do whatever you like to the stuff that I'm providing you with. But don't forget to leave your comments and feedback. So if you want to be notified about future episodes, the next one we're going to be making the ship that's going to get us off this rock and to the moon. Hopefully, uh, you can always subs subscribe to my channel. You can follow me on social media. Links for social media in the information box below the video. Thanks for watching, guys, and take care.